Okay, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new method for solving quadratic equations. I call it the Swinford method. And uh, in order to do this, I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine. Uh, his name's Swinney. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the coefficients, only the numbers out front in this quadratic, and I'm going to copy those coefficients down. 1, negative 6, positive 8. And uh, I'll show you uh, Swinney here in just a second. So what I'm going to do... To create Sweeney's left leg and right leg, I'm going to take this middle term and I'm going to take the opposite of it and half it. I'm going to multiply that number times itself and I get a positive 9. And to form Sweeney's arms, I'm going to multiply these two numbers together, 1 times 8, and that gives me 8 and that forms his head. And from there, we can go straight to our answer for this quadratic. Now, this quadratic would have been factorable. There's an easier method to uh, solve it. We know that we could factor it, but I just want to use this one to show you how to use Swinford's method. Uh, final answer for this problem is going to be the left leg, which was positive 3, plus and minus the square root of, we're going to subtract these two numbers, that's going to be the square root of 9 minus 8, which is 1. And if this number right here is any number other than 1, we're going to divide by it, but we know dividing by 1 yields the same answer, so we really don't have to do that. So since we know the square root of 1 is 1, we can change uh, the square root of 1 to simply 1, and we see our two answers. Our first answer is going to be 3 plus 1, which we know is 4. Our second answer we know is 3 minus 1, which we know is 2. And there's your two answers to this quadratic equation. Okay, let's work another one that's actually this time not factorable. So again, we're going to take our three coefficients, which are 2, negative 8, positive 3. So when he's left leg, we're going to do opposite and half it. Multiply that number times itself gives us the right leg. Form his arms, we're going to multiply those two numbers, and that gives us 6, and that's his head. So final answer, once again, we do left leg plus and minus the square root of the difference. We're going to subtract 16 minus 6, and that gives us 10, all divided by, since this is not a 1 this time, we're going to divide the whole thing by 2, and there's your final answer. There's the two values of x. Another example, just to show you, this also works for imaginary or complex answers. Now, if, uh, if you really don't want to rewrite all the coefficients, 3, 2, and 5, you could actually work it right on top of the uh, equation here. Left leg is going to be the opposite and half. Right leg, we multiply that number times itself. Take his arms, multiply them together, and that forms the head. So final answer to this quadratic was going to be, again, left leg plus and minus the square root. We're going to subtract these two numbers. 1 minus 15 gives us a negative 14. And we all divide it by this number over here, which is 3. Now, we know that anytime you have the square root of a negative, that's going to be a complex or, excuse me, imaginary number. So what we can do, the square root of negative 14. And sometimes if you see that it's going to be imaginary before you even write it down, you could do this step before. But that's going to be I root 14, again, all divided by 3. Okay, when using the Swinford method, we do have a workaround here. If the middle number is odd, we really don't want to to half that. So what we're going to do, instead of using 2, negative 3, and 1, if the middle number is odd, all we've got to do uh, as a workaround is just double all three of these numbers and work it the exact same way. You don't have to worry about doing anything with your final answer. It's going to come out to be the exact same correct answer. So again, left leg is opposite half. Excuse me, that's going to be a 3 because you're going to half it. Multiply that number times itself, gives you a 9. 4 times 2, his arms multiply to give you his head, which is 8. Final answer, 3 plus and minus. Since this is something you know the square root of, why not, as you write it down, do the square root of 9 minus 8, which is 1. The square root of 1 is just 1. And divide the whole thing by 4. So your two answers for this uh, quadratic equation is going to be 3 plus 4, or excuse me, 3 plus 1 divided by 4. And... 3 minus 1 divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, or 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. Okay, Swinford's method can also be very useful when we're graphing quadratics. We're going to start out the same way. 1, negative 8, 12. And what we're going to do here is we're going to find the roots or the x-intercepts. We're going to find the axis of symmetry. We're going to find the vertex and use that to actually graph it. Now, the way we're going to do that... To find the intercepts or the roots, again, left leg is opposite half, so positive 4. Multiply that times itself gives you right leg. Now, this one would have been also factorable, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to one, work one that's not factorable and, or that is factorable and then work one that uh, is not. 
Two arms multiply to give you head, which is 12. Therefore, your x-intercepts are left leg, plus and minus, the square root of the difference. So we're going to subtract these two numbers right here. Uh, that gives us 4. And since we know the square root of 4, let's go ahead and uh, actually do the square root of 4. Then we're going to divide the whole thing by 1. So that won't change it. So therefore, my two answers are 4 plus 2 and 4 minus 2, which are 6 and 2. And that's going to be my two intercepts on my graph. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. Now, this is really neat. In order to find the axis of symmetry, the line of symmetry is simply going to be this number divided by this number. So our axis of symmetry here is simply 4 over 1, or just 4. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and do an axis of symmetry here at 4. And in order to find that vertex, we're simply plugging that 4 in. And when we do that, we get a value of negative 4. So when x is 4, y is negative 4, and that's going to be our vertex to our parabola. So once we get these two intercepts and the vertex, we can simply connect our dots, and we've got a graph of our parabola. Okay, let's work one more graphing problem. Again, we're looking for the roots or the x-intercepts, the axis of symmetry, and the vertex, which again uh, can be very easily found using this method. Uh, we're looking at the a, B, and C values, and we notice that the middle term, again, is an odd number. So the workaround, we're going to double everything. 4, 10, negative 8. Le left leg, opposite half. Uh, Swinney's right leg, square that. Head, let's multiply the hands, gives you negative 32. So therefore, your uh, x-intercepts are going to be left leg plus and minus the square root of the difference between right leg and head, which is 57, all divided by 4. Uh, plugging that into our calculator, and we get approximate values of 0 0.64 or negative 3.14. So plotting those on our, our graph, 0.64 would lie somewhere right along in there, and negative 3.14 would be slightly smaller than negative 3. Uh, next up, we're going to find the axis of symmetry, which again can be very easily found by simply doing left leg over left hand. So therefore, your axis of symmetry is located at x equals negative 5 fourths or negative uh, 1.25 or negative 1 and 1 fourth. So I'm just going to do me a little blue dotted line here for negative uh, 1 and 1 fourth. So there's your axis of symmetry. Uh, in order to find the vertex, we're going to take simply that uh, axis of symmetry value, plug it into our original function, and we get a y value of about negative 7 and 1 eighths. So negative 7 and an eighth is going to be somewhere right along in there. Uh, simply connecting our dots gives us our parabola. Let me try that again. And there you go. So Swinford's method can be very easily applied, once again, to, to helping us graph quadratic equations. Next up, I'm going to show you how we can actually apply this method to find the inverses uh, of a quadratic function. Now, I'm not going to worry about uh, showing you domain and range and all that. I just want to go through the process of how to find the inverse using the method. So again, first off, to find an inverse, we know that we have to switch our x's and y's. So we have x equals y squared minus 6y plus 3. We're going to move our x value to the other side by subtracting. And we've got to solve this, uh, this equation here for y. We've got to figure out what y value is. So therefore, uh, with this method, again, we're going to write down our a, b, and c values, which are neg 1, negative 6, and in this case, 3 minus x is now our new c value. We go through the process the exact same way. Left leg is opposite half, so Swinney's left leg will be 3. Uh, right leg, you square the 3 to give you a 9. Uh, his head is going to be left hand times right hand, which is 3 minus x. Let me write and rewrite that, 3 minus x. So therefore, solving for y gives us, uh, and this would be our inverse value, so we could actually call it y inverse, uh, left leg plus and minus the square root of the difference. I'm just going to come up here and do 9 minus 3 minus x. And that gives us a value of x uh, plus 6, all divided by our left hand, which is 1. So therefore, there's the inverse of our function. Okay, let's do one more just to show you that the workaround also works for this. So uh, we're, again, switching our x and y's to find the inverse. x equals 2y squared plus 5y uh, plus 3. 
move your x over by subtracting, uh, and now we've got to solve this thing for y. And notice my middle term is odd, so in order to solve it for y, we're going to double everything. That gives me a 4, a 10, and a 6 minus 2x when I double. Swinney's left leg is a negative 5. His right leg is a 25. To find his head, we're going to multiply his hands, and that gives me a 24 minus 8x. So therefore, the value of my inverse is going to be left leg plus and minus the square root of the difference. We've got to subtract these two things, which gives me 8x plus 1, all divided by 4. And then you could, again, go into domain restrictions and all that. But that's the process of how to find that inverse. Okay, this next problem, just to show you that Swiffer's method can be applied to some of your higher math courses. Uh, let's solve a quadratic uh, equation that has trigonometry built in. So this says solve the trig equation on the interval from 0 to 360 degrees. So we have cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. So again, we're going to extract our, extract our coefficients here. And I notice our middle term is odd, so we're going to go ahead and double it. So we have 2, 6 negative 6, so Swinney's left leg, right leg will be negative 3, opposite half, and then square it gives you a 9. His head is going to be negative 12. So therefore here, the value of cosine, not x, the value of cosine is going to be left leg plus and minus the square root of the difference uh, in this order. So that's going to be 21 all divided by 2. So therefore the cosine value has uh, two different possibilities. We have cosine is either equal to 0 0.791 or cosine is equal to negative 3.791, which we know is impossible because cosine cannot be below negative 1. So therefore, uh, doing the inverse cosine to figure out what x is, we get x values of 37.7 degrees, or also on that interval, we would also have 322.3 degrees. We also know that in physics we deal a lot with projectile motion and quadratics. So therefore, Swiffer's method could uh, definitely be applied to physics. And just to show you that these higher numbers are not going to affect it. Uh, we have projectile motion problem here. Uh, and this equation models the height of this ball that's thrown upward. And we want to know when uh, will this ball hit the ground. So therefore, we're, we're interested in when is our height. Uh, negative 16t squared plus 80t plus 40, we want to know when our height is equal to zero. So since our middle number is already even, we can go ahead and just do our problem right here if we'd like to. Left leg is going to be opposite and half. Uh, in order to find Swinney's right leg, we're just going to be uh, going to square that. And to find his head, it's going to be uh, hand times hand, and that's going to be negative 640. So therefore, uh, plugging that into our formula, our time when it's equal to zero is going to be left leg plus and minus the square root of the difference, which in this case is going to be uh, 2240, all divided by the negative 16. Typing that into our calculator, we get two times. Uh, we have a time of negative 0 0.46 or 5.46, is when this ball is going to hit the ground. Since our time is uh, negative, that's outside of our domain restrictions, we get a time of 5.46 seconds, and that's when the ball is actually going to hit the ground.